And I know it's one of something we're going to touch on, which I think ties in on any of the, the changes that we've both kind of gone through in the past month uh, was how, how much we appreciate our art, how I came to a newfound realization that, man, you know, I didn't realize what I was missing all those times. Uh, welcome to Out of the Box Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Steele Adcock. My name is Jose Tapia. This is a show where we talk about out-of-the-box ideas in the world and just different things that catch our attention. Hopefully, you can also find this interesting. And so we'll start off with some introductions. Uh, Steele, if you want to kick it off. All right. So my name is Steele Adcock. I uh, am currently pursuing a degree at the University of Houston in Victoria in counseling psychology and master's program. I only got one more semester left, and then I get my licensed professional counseling license. Um, before that, I got my bachelor's degree at St. Mary's University in San Antonio um, in communication studies with a minor in psychology. And I did a little bit of research there, but I'm doing much more research at UHV right now, working on about three pro uh, research projects right now. Um, I also do uh, filmmaking on the side. I've been doing that for over 13 years now. I uh, got into a film festival one time. And other than that, I just I like to write. My job right now is a content writer, a remote content writer for different law firms and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the gist of it. Awesome, awesome. And like I said at the beginning, my name is Jose Tapia. And a little bit about myself. Um, I am a graduate also from St. Mary's University. It's actually where I met Steele. Um, I'm a communication major, speech communication major. I studied music as well, so I have that music background. And one of the things that I'm currently doing, uh, just um, I was working at the university as an admission counselor, and it's been about a month that I've been doing pursuing my my side side hustle as a full time thing, and which is balloon making. So my dad, uh, when I was younger, he was a clown for birthday parties, and now I've continued what I learned from him specifically in the balloon art business and just continue to do it, to do that at parties, at restaurants, different stuff like that. So that's one of the artistic endeavors that I'm doing. I'm also a musician for, uh, for church. And so I, I do get to play um, music at church uh, with the piano, leading with the guitar and also with vocals. So uh, just a little bit of different things there. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're excited today to share a little bit about what the struggles are for creatives and um, how you can make that into a full-time thing. Um, maybe some ideas and that might benefit you in your journey as a creative. So still, did you want to start off with a question? Yeah. So the first question that we came up with for this podcast is it's all about what you're talking about. The whole theme is about motivation to pursue artistic goals. So, you know, like for me, it's filmmaking, prose, it's music and balloon making as a small business. Um, so the first question really, um, and then no point of this uh, podcast today is to try to uh, tap into what it takes to pursue your artistic goals. Because, you know, a lot of the classic struggling artists, you know, everyone who's pursuing an art form is struggling in some way. And some are luckier than others, but... Um, I think a lot of artists can kind of relate to the beginning being challenging, self-doubt, and trying to figure out how you're going to make, uh, I guess, just make a living off of something that's so uh, different than the usual kind of uh, work. So the first question yeah. that would be, what are some new life changes that you've gone through recently that relate to pursuing your artistic goals? Yeah, well... One of the most recent ones, I mean, like I said in my introduction, uh, it's been roughly about a month since, you know, I started doing my balloon making full time, uh, which has now replaced, you know, in, in terms of finances, what I was making at my other job. And so I think it's uh, to, to make that jump. Sometimes it takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of risk sometimes um, because you don't have a consistent, you know, salary or, you know, you're not getting paid by the hours. 
really what you make uh, from from getting out there. And so you really have to position yourself in a venue where, you know, you're doing that on the side, but then it starts replacing slowly what you're doing um, during the week, right? So, so for example, the balloon making things, uh, that's mainly like a weekend kind of deal. And so it allowed me to work during the week. And then on the weekends, I was also working with the balloons, creating consistency, advertising. And I realized that uh, at one point, I could replace what I was making on the weekend or what, what I was making during the week on the weekend. And sometimes, you know, I, I see a lot of artists, you know, they, um, they sometimes don't find that soon or fast enough, you know, and, and so they can't make the transition. Um, and for me, you know, it's something that I, I really enjoy balloon making. Um, I did not at first though. So that's, that's a, a good point to mention. Sometimes you don't know what might catch your attention or what might help you pay the bills and still kind of be something that you enjoy uh, while you transition into other projects. Uh, right now, I'm not making anything, or, or actually I am making uh, some some income through the music gigs that I'm getting, um, playing at church, but it's not something that could replace, you know, uh, a full-time income. Or, or at least, you know, to pay all living expenses. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't have to be much. And you sometimes have to humble yourself. Like I'm living right now uh, with my parents and, you know, it's, it's okay. I mean, for me, that's not something that affects me, you know, in terms of relationships with, uh, for example, my girlfriend um, or, you know, with other people. You know, some people might find that, you know, oh, wow, like he's still living with his parents. Like, why hasn't he moved out? But, you know, I'm, I'm having the option and my parents, in a way, are, are supporting me uh, with, you know, helping me push the endeavors uh, that I have in mind. I'm also helping out at the house. Uh, but it really comes down to uh, being humble about what you're doing, you know, humbling yourself and allowing not allowing other people's opinion about what you're doing to affect you, right? Because, you know, if we want to have the nice car and all that, um, you know, at the same time, we're doing all these transitions, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to do that. And so one we really have to humble themselves. And if you do have the opportunity or, or maybe you don't have the opportunity to live at home, but you find three, four, five other people that are willing to, you know, live together, really humble means, and just everyone's working on their projects, well, you know, that could be another way, right? But at the end of the day, it's really being humble um, about what you're doing so that you can have more time to work on your craft, right? Or yeah, what, what yeah. do you think, Sue? Yeah, I think it's very well said, yeah. Because uh, I can relate to that. I mean, I'm living with my parents. It wasn't even like a pre-planned thing. Like, I wasn't planning on moving out as soon as I graduated St. Mary's because I knew... I don't know. I just, I knew I still had more schooling to do with my master's degree. Um, and I should be moving it out about two years, but, um, I guess what my parents always brought me up is ingrained in me is like always having a backup plan, like a solid foundation that you can base. Like you can, they never discouraged me from pursuing filmmaking, even though filmmaking, the chances of, of making it big is, is slim because it's a huge field. And there's a lot of competition and it's only natural. Um, but I think just the idea of having a solid foundation, which is why it's not the only reason, but it's definitely one of the reasons why I went for my master's degree to get a, li a license in uh, counseling. You know, one is because I'm passionate about counseling and I like helping people and I've done it in the past. The other reason is because it's a solid foundation, like it's a guaranteed job, you know, and it's a pretty solid mm -hmm. job too with enough uh, income to cover and help uh, support my filmmaking. So I can still do filmmaking on the side. I may not have as much time if I didn't have the counseling job, but at the same time, I'll still at least have more time than if I were to go to medical school and become a doctor, which is another thing I was going to do at one point. But then that's when I decided to weigh the options and then decide that filmmaking is really not something I can give up. You know, uh, so counseling and, gives me and like something that that you have also found has been, you know. A transition because when we've talked um, about your interest, 
you have found a way to add the psychology into your films, right? So it's yeah. still feeding into that main goal or main idea that you have envisioned for your creative project, um, while at the same time you're getting your certification and you still have that backup just in case, right? right Which is exactly. something that you know sometimes we don't we're not earning money off of the the things that that uh, we create uh, at first, but uh, at least we have something on the side to still help us with, you know, at least finding uh, a way to, to live, right. To survive. Right. Exactly. And I know it's one of something we're going to touch on, which I think ties in on any of the, the changes that we've both kind of gone through in the past month uh, was how, uh, how much we appreciate our art, how I came to a newfound realization that man, you know, I didn't realize what I was missing all this time. Like I know as you were, you were kind of busier with your job at St. Mary's and it was taking time away from music and stuff. And for me, it was grad school, just preparing for the comps exam, uh, doing research, uh, taking classes. And then this just past few weeks, I finally actually had time to sit down and start writing scripts again, making short films, editing, something, all things that I love. I love video editing. It's like an addiction. Um, but yeah, just like, you know, when, you're, when I'm in school and I'm in the midst of doing all the schoolwork and my job stuff, I'm not thinking, I don't have time to think about filmmaking or anything like that. And I'm just kind of like in the zone, I guess, you know, not really kind of like tunnel vision. But now that I've come to kind of come back to filmmaking a little bit, it's kind of like a spark. It's like something I feel alive again, like mm -hmm. we were talking about before. It kind of sparks yeah. something. You're like, oh man, I forgot how, I forgot how much this makes me feel alive, how much this makes me feel something, how, how exciting it feels, you know, because you, know, you kind of go through life and you're like not feeling excited and then you realize what's missing when you go back to it, like me and filmmaking and you and uh, music and balloons and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think the statistic goes that, you know, almost only 13% of the, the world in adults, you know, say that they feel fulfilled with what they're doing in life, you know? And so, you know, I think that was one of the main reasons also why I had decided to, to move even though I knew it was a risk and even though I knew, you know, it might take a little bit more from my end to, you know, go ahead and, and continue with this project with the balloons, which is the, the main, main uh, income stream right now. You know, I just didn't feel like my creative juices were, were flowing. It just fe felt like, you know, I was doing enough, you know, I was still working on the weekends, but I wasn't creating any new figures, you know, and sometimes it, you have to work those, you know, full weeks, right? If you really want to see and be able to transition, you have to really work. Uh, I've been doing balloon making since I, um, since I was 12, you know, it's been 12 years now, I'm 24. And it's crazy because, you know, a lot of the reason why I was able to make that change was because I've gone through those 12 years right? It's taken some time, you know, but it was worth it. It was worth staying, sticking through it. You know, I've developed uh, relationships and, and places where I can, can make that, replace that income from the week. And so, which is awesome, but um, it takes sometimes working um, all week to, to really get yourself up there. And sometimes it's really believing in yourself at the end of the day, because it's, uh, it's taking a risk and saying, I believe that I can do it you know, and I don't want to wake up one day and say, you know, I should have tried, right? right? What if I should have, what if I did this, you know? And, yeah, yeah. and that's one of the things, you know, regrets is I think one of the, the worst nightmares that one can have in their older years. And, and so that, that's one of the things that, you know, I, I want to promote. I want other people to, to know that it is possible, you know, you don't just have to watch it on TV or on, on social media and dream of, of the possibility. You can take action and start working on your side hustle today. You know, it might be sacrificing, you know, a weekend or, or the weekends to get that up and running so that later you can, um, you know, transition or maybe working in the evenings after a long day of work and, you know, deciding to put in the, the hours to, to get your, your, your projects out there. But, you know, 
it's worth it. I think it's yeah. definitely worth it. Um, once, you know, once you, you cross that hud- uh, hurdle of being able to create and do this for a living, you know, it's, it's just really awesome. You feel so alive because every day you're creating something new. Um, people enjoy watching you and seeing what you create. And even though, you know, I'm not making millions, you know, that's not what matters. What matters is that I'm creating, um, you know, almost like a superhero, you know, I'm becoming the person that I want to become because I'm putting the hours where I want to, the energy is going in a specific direction. And, you know, it's, it's not to say that some people might find it fulfilling to be doing two things at a time. You know, maybe they have their day job or a part-time job and still do their creative projects. If both of them, you know, are fulfilling for you, then go ahead, you know? Um, but if you want to make the transition and one's not happy at the moment, then, you know, it's starting to put those hours um, to really work at it so that later on in two, three years, you can make that transition. Um, and so I would rather go, you know, through the pain for at least, you know, one, two, three years, uh, then, you know, never have tried at all. Right. So, um, so yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's something that, that I had in mind right now. Yeah. That reminds me of a story I, I heard about recently where a 40 year old man, I don't know what he was doing before, but he decided that he wanted to be a doctor and he was 40 years old already, but he went to medical school. I think it took him eight years and he ended up becoming a doctor. And by the time he was like, I guess 48. So it's like, yeah, you know, if you really have the passion and of course you do kind of have to have resources depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, But yeah, when you have those two things, I think you can make it happen if you just go for it. You know, of course it's, it's never too late. Yeah, it's never too late. You know, it's, um, you know, statistics show that, you know, we're probably, if let's say we, we are probably in our 20s, um, we're probably going to live two or three more lives, you know? Um, we have already lived, you know, one-fourth or one-third of our lives. And so we, we still have a long way to go, you know, and, and that's one of the things that we have to develop a good relationship with time sometimes to realize because you know society tells us like oh get it faster you know save up a year of schooling and you know uh make this shorter so that you can start working now and you know sometimes we just have to remember there's patience as well and uh valuing patience is what really sets you on that track of living day by day because you know, like right now I was saying, you know, what if it takes one, two or three years to, to transition into the life that you want to live? Well, you know, you can't do that without patience, right? Because one can say like, oh, well, well why can't I just do it within the next month or the next three months, you know? And um, it really takes that patience to, to really say like, okay, well, how am I going to start doing that project today? How am I going to be patient today? So that I can start building those uh, those steps, those layers to get to where I want to be, right? Yeah. It's kind of like that story where they say it's um, there, there's this person that goes to to somebody that was building and he was putting some bricks, right? And he asked them like, "Hey, so what are you doing?" And he said, "Yeah, I'm just layering bricks here." There was another person right next to him, and he asked him like, "Hey, what are you doing?" He's like, well, I'm building a wall, right? And then he asked the third person, he had a big smile, and he said, what are you building? And he said, I'm building a cathedral, right? And so you see, you start seeing the difference. The first person, you know, just saw, you know, oh, I'm just doing, doing, putting a brick, right? The second person, just the wall. But the other person, the last person, saw that big mission, saw that big idea, you know, I'm going to do this. And he wasn't, he had that big smile because he, he knew he had a mission. He had um, a path of something that he was going to create. It was going to be a cathedral, right? And he already saw it in his mind, which is something that I think is fascinating about the creative process. Because let's, let's say, for example, whenever I'm going to create a new figure with balloons, 
sometimes I can see it in my mind before it actually comes into fruition, like until it becomes a lot, uh, when it becomes alive. And so I think it's being pa- patient with that process of saying like, okay, so maybe I can improve it here. Maybe I can do this, but it starts forming itself first in the mind and then it becomes a reality in the world. Um, yeah, exactly. Which is, you know, something I think is awesome. Yeah. If you don't have a vision, you know, it's the difference between someone having a vision and just seeing things, I guess, for what they are, you know, you got to be able to see beyond the things in front of you to, I think that's part of a lot of artists, you know, like paintings, uh, filmmaking, you know, you don't just see ordinary objects you see something more. That's what the whole surrealist art movement was about is, is about seeing ordinary things in strange ways. I heard, I read somewhere once that art is simply taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary by either exaggeration or, you know, different things like that, changing it slightly. Um, so yeah. we've got about 10 more minutes left. Um, yeah, and I, I think going off of that, you know, I think there's a, there's a really cool quote that I have here in my desk, and it says, every child is an artist. The problem is staying an artist when you grow up. Pablo Picasso. Oh, really? So it's true. I think that creative process is, is sucked out sometimes out of us, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we come to think that we are an artist. But I think, you know, when we talk about artists, we're not just talking about, you know, people who paint or people who, who do a uh, sculpting or, or whatever it might be. We're talking about business people. Business people are artists because they have to create new ways to uh, to start their entrepreneurial projects, um, scientists, they're, they're also artists, you know, every field has its art form. Uh, it has its way of, of creating, you know, new things, you know, because it's constantly evolving. And so every child has this artistic endeavor, uh, within themselves expressed in different areas. But, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, I've, I've always felt like, you know, if something's sucking out your create creative juices, you know, find a way to 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 get out of it or move somewhere else because, you know, at the end of the day, it's almost like a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? And right. so, yeah, I think that's something that you know, we we have to continue practicing to also feel alive. You know, uh, for for those who who do find um, you know more of the the art kind of projects, you know, sometimes that makes you feel alive in any creative endeavor, you know, whether that be business, science, you know, engineering, you know, it just makes you feel alive. And that that's how you know where you want to go, right? Because I think another struggle that a lot of artists find is that they enjoy doing so many things, right? They're really good at, or they are half good at painting and then they're half good at drawing and then they're half good at you know, sculpting or, or doing, uh, you know, whatever it might be, uh, balloon making in my case. And, and then they don't know which one to pursue. And sometimes the best way is to double down on one specific thing. But if you don't know what to do, maybe you haven't tasted enough. Right. And so you might still have that time to, to, uh, to go and taste some things. Uh, but if you do know, um, maybe there's one that, you know, comes out better than the other, then you might be able to start doubling down on that one. Um, you know, and so it's really, really having that time. I think time is, is a big asset for creatives. Um, because when you have time and the patience, it gives you the opportunity to experiment, right? Experiment to create new things. Otherwise you're just kind of, Living as you go, you know, you're just, you know, doing the superficial, but not making something extraordinary. Right. And time, for me, time and uh, motivation are the two challenges that I probably face the most. Time, obviously, because I spoke earlier about grad school, but and balancing that out, but also motivation, because the motivation isn't always there. It's not there every single day. Or sometimes, in my case, it was there for like four days straight. Uh, where I just had this motivation, this energy to do filmmaking. So I had a whole ton of videos and started writing, working more on my script. But then the next day you're like, wake up, you're like tired and 
you just that same motivation is not there or like i've worked on film projects my whole life pretty much but like full length ones those are the hardest ones to do because they take about a year and a half to make when you're not like you know because you're not like a professional you don't have like a schedule it's kind of just you're doing it week by week and you got to work mm-hmm. around different schedules and stuff but even when i worked on like film projects that i was really passionate about in the beginning somewhere around the middle or near the end i start losing the same passion i had in the beginning and at that point i'm just like i need to finish what i started we already worked so hard to get this far we had to finish it you know uh, but then it's always worth it in the end because then i finally finish the movie and then i watch it you know with friends and stuff and I'm like man this really you know either it turned out better than i expected or this part didn't turn out as good but either way it's like i feel like i accomplished something and and i guess that kind of like teaches me that even when you feel doubt or you don't have the motivation to continue it's like just go for it anyways because it's going to be worth it in the end i don't know if you struggle with uh, motivation ever before on any of your projects yeah yeah all the time man i think you know i right now where i'm focusing more on the balloon stuff i've had a little bit less time to to kind of be more creative with the music um you know, and and I think it's sometimes okay, you know, you'll have those moments where you move from one interest to the other, and it's just our curiosity, you know, we follow the bliss of the moment, and at the end of the day, if it's making you happy to go from one to the other, or maybe putting 80% of your time on one and 20% on the other, you know, if it's making you happy, I think that's one of the, the big aspects to to really knowing what what to do, because it's really hard sometimes to tell like, Hey, like, am I doing the right thing? Should I be putting more time on the music or should I be putting more time on the balloons? That's an internal dialogue that, you know, I have sometimes, uh, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, I, I realized that, you know, what, what is making me happy? And sometimes I just enjoy learning about how to market the balloon stuff and how, and what I can do to get, awareness and that sort of thing and so that's exciting and so i follow that blitz of the moment uh for example today i uh i was going to start editing a video for a tutorial that i'm going to put out for for balloon making uh which is uh, on my youtube channel balloon bros and then all of a sudden i had this bliss of you know recording a music video you know or recording myself singing a song that I really enjoy. And that led me into a path of like then doing a duet on TikTok with somebody else. And then, you know, it, it just fills you with so much joy. And sometimes it can become a rabbit hole. So you have to learn, you know, how to back up, you know, and say like, okay, well, what's the priority right now? And then be like, okay, so I, I really need to get awareness and start working on a commercial so i'm gonna make that commercial and edit that video yeah so So, you almost had to force yourself to do something when you're in the rabbit hole because sometimes i'll get in a rabbit hole too a rabbit hole of like editing or like over the past four days and they're like yeah but i haven't been working on the horror script and it's in the back of my mind i'm supposed to be working on my next film project that's a horror movie and so i literally even though i had no motivation to do it i just felt like you know maybe i should just watch a horror movie and see if it inspires me but no i was like no you keep telling yourself that you're going to sit down at this computer. And that's what I did yesterday in the evening. And I let put some like music helps me like write and like edit sometimes to like motivate me, mm-hmm. like, you know, an emotional song or like, like for the horror script, I listened to like an hour long YouTube video mix of like ambient horror drone to get me in the mood. And then I did, I, when I first started, I was like, ah, oh, no, 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 I'm not feeling that at all. But then once I kind of just forced myself to get into it before I knew it, I was spending like over an hour, writing and adding to it and fixing this and that and before you know it i'm back i'm back into it again so it's like sometimes you have to almost force yourself to get them like find those triggers right that get you back into the the flow state where where you're just constantly creating yeah it's so easy to resist doing something that you want to do or know you should do and it's so easy to go for the instant gratification instead you know like like oh i'll give myself 10 extra minutes of a break or i'll watch a movie or something you know because i don't feel like it right now but it's like you gotta like yeah get yourself out of that kind of mindset almost and force it sometimes yeah yeah and i think that motivation aspect is is a 
is a key component, you know, because sometimes, you know, we are human, we're not machines. And so we're not just going to be constantly like, oh, creating, creating, creating. You know, sometimes you have to have those moments of, you know, silence or those moments of, you know, discovering something else, which helps you come back. And once you reconvene, you're like, you have more ideas. That happens to me too. Um, I thought I was a procrastinator, but I discovered that my procrastination is actually really helpful in the sense that sometimes the period between starting, I'll work on something real quick and then I'll, I'll let it go because, you know, maybe just a roadblock that, you know, I stopped creating and then I'll come back to it after two to three days and then I'll work on it a little bit, you know, and I have fresh ideas that, you know, I wrote down or something that new that came up and I was, and made me think of the project I was working on and it comes out better, right. Instead of trying to do it all at once, but right. sometimes it does come at once, you know, it depends, um, yeah. but it's, it's not procrastinating in a way. It's just, you know, really catching those flow states, right. Those, those moments where you're like, okay, wow, this, this is really a great idea or something that I find fascinating, you know? And so that's, that's, that's a, a good point that to mention, you know, that sometimes, you know, there might be those states that you feel like you're procrastinating on a project, but it's actually taking a rest to, to really feel inspired, right. To, to get another uh, perspective or a way um, to, to get inspired so that you can continue that project. And so, yeah. Um, I so. Sometimes I think my best work comes at random moments in, in the day. Uh, sometimes it's something I heard someone say or something that, um, you know, somebody asked me at the restaurant or uh, where I, I sometimes make balloon figures. So just different things like that can can be sources of inspiration. And I think it's healthy as way. Uh, uh, um, um, Healthy also, <laughs> because, um, you know, it's another way to just kind of let, let it kind of simmer, you know, it's, it's kind of like letting the, the meat simmer in, in the, in the grill, you know, just waiting for it to, to really get to that perfect state so that, you know, ideas can start coming in. Yeah. So it's that, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> makes sense. It's kind of like, and at the conclusion of our podcast, I'll say this is like, it's kind of like you have to give yourself a break so you don't burn out. You know what I mean? So you burn out. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen, you know? But uh, yeah. final words, in terms of like final words, I will say this. Um, there is something that you said that reminded me of what I read in this biography about Leonardo da Vinci. He kind of did a similar thing to where he would work on a painting, but he wouldn't finish it all at once, of course. But he would like go days at a time without working on it at all. And then like he would take like a minute or 10 minutes or 15 minutes out of a day to add just the tiniest little detail or the tiniest little modification to make it like perfect, you know? And so like he wouldn't even like work on it every single day or 24 hours a day. He would just, you know, he would add this here and there every so often until it was done. But with that being said, do you have any uh, final words or for this podcast? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I would just like to say if there's something creative that you want to do full time, put in the time. It's going to be sacrificing something, you know, in your day, in your life that's going on. But the rewards of it becoming a reality are far more exciting than, than never having tried at all. And so, Put in the time, be patient with whatever project you're doing, you know, and don't expect to become a millionaire, uh, you know, like don't have that pressure to, to make a lot of money, you know, especially in the creative aspect, you know, as long as you're able to, to make the means and have the time and also have the happiness to, to really wake up every day and, and feel excited about life. I think at the end of the day, that's what every creative should aspire to, to be the, 
having that legacy and, and also having the opportunity to grow in your artistic endeavors. Very well said. All right. Well, that concludes our Sounds podcast good. for today. Next week, we are going to talk religion. So it should be very interesting. Awesome. All Take right. care, guys.